Hello YouTube, this will be a video tutorial slash explanation video on how I do my programming and how to use the NXT 2.0 programming software. So, although this is the 2.0, I don't actually own the EV3 or its software, so this is all I have to show you guys, but I was asked a question on how I do my programming and about a specific block, so I'm going to be showing you guys a video from the common all the way to the advanced blocks and basically just telling you what each one's used for and then I'll go over some of my own programs and show you how I use them. So, the first block, so I just basically laid out all of the blocks and I kind of deleted some of the duplicates all the way down to the advanced. So, here we go. So the first block is a movement block. So as you can see, it's the um, motor block. You can control up to two, actually three motors with this block, and you can go forward, backward, or stop. And then you can even coordinate a turn and stuff like that. And then you can um, adjust the power and how many degrees or rotations your motor is going to rotate. Then you've got a record block here, and this block basically allows you to record the, I guess, the actions of a certain voters and then for a certain time. And I actually haven't used this um, block before, so I don't really know that much about that. But this is the um, other motor block, which can be found in the action section. These two are the, these two are the common section here. And then you've got the action section starting here. So we've got the basic motor block, which, which can control two or no, one motor at a time, my bad. And it can do the same features as the other one, the power, the um, rotations, and a different kind of action, so coast or break. And then you've got a sound block here, so you can play pre-made sounds, certain volume, adjust the volume, and all of that. You can even make your own custom sounds, but um, I would have to figure out how you do that. And then they've got the view or display block so you can display text images or draw or you can have it reset which you can also do this by just clear checking the clear or unchecking that and that's important for when you're writing longer messages including multiple of these blocks you don't want to clear that unless you absolutely don't want anything else on the screen so you've also got the Bluetooth send box Block. I haven't actually used this, but it can send a message, I'm assuming, to the NXT, and you can use that message to coordinate two NXTs. And I haven't really used two NXTs in one creation before, so I didn't ever had to really use that. Then you've lastly got this um, color lamp block. So this can um, project certain colors from your color sensor, I believe, and you can do different features with that. So now I'll be moving on to the sensor section. That was the action, so now we've got the sensor section, and all of these sensors from highlighting here, these are basically just live readings of your sensors that you connect. So you have the touch sensor, sound, light, ultrasonic, NXT buttons, the rotation, which is actually just a um, motor sensor, and then you've got the timer, Bluetooth message, and color. So based on what sensor you're using, like this one senses distance, basically these read that and you can send the um, information to like a logic block or something like that, and I believe I'll show you that later on in the video. So I'll show you guys how I use that in my programs. So now that was the sensor section, so now we've got the flow section. Moved a little bit too far. Okay, there we go. So you've got the wait block. This can actually wait for either a sensor or time. So set amount of time simplifies it. Or you can do a sensor and any of these sensors go. So it'll receive a message. You can wait till you get an NXT button pressed or something like that. So then there's also the loop. So this can allow you to loop it a certain amount of times forever or till like a sensor is triggered or something like that. So as you can see, this loop block is pretty um, useful, and I use that quite a bit in my creations. And then you've got this lastly in the flow section is a switch. So this is kind of a two option system here, and based on either a sensor or a value, like logic or a number, you can either go to the top or bottom. So that's basically how that works. And then you've got this, a stop block, which I'm pretty sure just ends the program. 
So that's, if you want to end the program, then you can do that. And you can also set that to like, if a touch sensor is pressed, then stop the program. So that's what you would use that for. And then you've got um, logic. So this is moving on to the data section. So like I mentioned before, the logic block can do different things with the and, or, and all that stuff. The chart kind of shows you what will be valid and how this all works. So depending on what you're programming, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can use this to logically say, if this is true, then do this. Then you've got the math block, which you can do simple addition, subtraction, all of these things, absolute value, even a square root in there. And those, that block is pretty useful for like just doing simple calculations. And then this is the operation block. So it allows you to use logic based on two values. So if A is greater than B, if it's less than B, then it will give you a true or false result. And then you've got this range block here. So it takes a number from any of your sensors or something like that. And if that number is inside the range, then it'll be true or false, same as the previous ones. Then you've got the random block. So this is a, I actually had someone question me on this uh, random block here or how I did made it random, um, the ping pong machine specifically. So what you have is a range. So I actually set that one through three on my ping pong box, which seems simple, but I did that. And that's because there was three different places, either shooting to the left of the table, the center of the table, or the right of the table. So that allows you to, so the random block can select a number from one to, I um, believe, can go over a hundred yeah so you can do a number basically within whatever range you set and it will select a random number within there and you can use that in your program however you would like and then that number gets exported with the wire system here so then you've got the logic block or no my bad this is the variable block so you can set different variables and these variables can be either red or written to. So you can write to a variable and then that will basically, you can write a specific number and then that variable can be used later on in the um, program. So I believe I use that in my programs elsewhere. Then this is the last one in the data section. This is the um, constant. So you can set a constant. So choose from a list. You can set a constant here and then use that constant forget exactly how, but yeah, you can use this again, sort of like the variable block, and that's kind of how that works. So it can set, so basically this number can be used throughout your program. And then we've got the advanced section. So this is from number to text. So normally you would think you could take this number and just display it, but actually you have to put it through the number to text block and then use the text to display on the display. So that's kind of something I had to learn. And then there's also this block. Um, I've never used this text block, so you might be able to you do something with um, writing multiple things or something like that. This block is useful to keep alive. This allows you to keep your program, like make your NXT not sleep. So that way you can do, if it's like waiting on something that might take a while, you don't want your NXT to turn off. That is where this block comes in handy. Then you've got this block, which is the file access block. And this allows you to read and from certain files and use that later on in the program, again, with the other stuff. And if you save a file onto the NXT brick itself, then you can do stuff like that. Then you've got the calibrate block, which can allow you to, I guess, um, make certain sounds or something like that. I have never used this block either. And then this is the reset motor block, so this can allow you to just reset your motors. And lastly, the Bluetooth. So you can either turn on Bluetooth or do different things with the Bluetooth block. So those are all the blocks, kind of a long kind of exp explanation there, but what we have is a long list of tools you can use. So now in my programs, my ping pong program, for example, I'll show you guys how I use some of this stuff. So 
down here, touch sensor. If it waits till sensor two is pressed, then it stops the program. So that's just a feature added into there just for fun. Then you've got the keep alive block with a loop. So this keeps the program going forever. And then you've got some displays. So these are like just messages. As you can see on this one, I have clear here. So that way it clears the screen. But on the other ones, I made sure not to check that. So that way it doesn't clear the previous message. So then this waits until you press the button again. And then it continues the program. More displays. Don't really need to show that. And then we've got... Okay, so went a little bit too far. Okay, so we've got the math. So this, okay, so here's what I did here. I made this zero plus zero, and that will turn into the difficulty level. So that's gonna write to difficulty number and make that zero. But I believe I change, okay, so that just sets the difficulty number or makes the variable and then Based on which button you pressed here, there's a two option. So if it's true that this button was pressed, then it sets one to the difficulty. And then same for this, center button's pressed, sets two to the difficulty. One plus one equals two, sets that to difficulty. Set it on right, so that's the variable. And then we've got the right one, so on, makes it three. So then that takes the difficulty number Make sure it's within a range, and if that's true, then it will... Okay, it will break the loop. This is why. So, before the loop, I set the difficulty number to zero on purpose. So that way, the loop will continue till one of these actions is complete. So it's constantly going through. And once this sets it to one, it can then break this loop, continue on to the program. So now we are on to bigger and better things. So that sets the time. So the difficulty number, it reads that within the side the range of one, then it will do this. It will run the easy ping pong bot program. So that is the, um, on easy mode, it has the three options, stuff like that. And then you've got the, if it's in the range of two. So that basically, if, if the number is two on difficulty settings, it will give you one or two seconds per ball. And then this one is where it gives you three or one second per ball. This is where it gives you three seconds per ball. So if you guys have watched my ping pong robot um, video, then you'll know what I'm talking about. It has the different settings. And there's also settings within the settings, which uses this kind of loop system again. But that is kind of how I use loops and stuff like that. And now I'll show you guys my um, turret program. So this is my LEGO NXT turret program. I made a video for this a little while back. So now I'll show you how this works. This is a little bit more going on at once, I would say. So you've got the range. So it's basically this will display the range inches. And then this will set the max range. So what happens is this allows you to set how far away your NXT turret is from the wall so that way it doesn't see the wall and shoot at the wall. So you can set the max range and what I have is a number so this is reading the value and then it's displaying it changing the number to text like I said before you have to have this and then this text is displayed. So this whole section basically displays the max range thing so you can see the const or the variable so you don't know just not guessing and this here allows button one to then add two to the max range variable so that adds two then you have your max range number it writes to it and after button three is pressed it breaks this loop i believe so that's basically how that works and then this one is the same thing but this is going to be minus two so this is how I set the max range before the program was to start then when button three breaks these two loops it starts on this loop here and this is where you have the motor turning doing distance aim and that um, this loop is repeating 
27 times. And now this distance aim basically uses the three options, sees, uses the ultrasonic sensor to see how far of a distance it has, and then it um, shoots that distance, based, basically a large program. I'll show you guys that in a sec. And down here we have this on the display, which says ultrasonic reading. Here's the ultrasonic sensor. This is the live sensor thing in the sensors part. And now it's giving its reading to this number to text, displays the text. So this allows you to see um, what the ultrasonic sensor is reading every second it resets the screen. So that's how that works. And then up here, so this is just basically allowing you to display the number. So this is displaying the number. Okay, so now you've got the distance aim. So I have this open too, and this is the last thing I have for you guys. So this um, shows it basically in the instant that it goes, I believe, 10 degrees or something like that. It just turns a hair, and then it measures the distance. And if it comes within the um, less than 50 inches, I guess, basically the moral of the story here is that if this... If it, oh, okay. So basically, if it's within 50 inches, and it will say that this is true, and then it's going to be true up here. It's false. Let's see what we got going here. So basically, it's a series of the um, ultrasonic sensor things, and if it's within the distance, it will shoot. If it's without, if it's not within the distance, it won't shoot. Going on, as you can see, it moves up a little bit, shoots. Here, it moves up again, shoots, but this is a different distance. It's moving up 45 degrees. Here, it's moving up 22 degrees. So you can see here that it's obviously moving a different distance, and this is based on what range I have here. So here I've got a range of 17 to 27 um, inches, I think, and then 27 to 44 inches. So, and this is reading in inches, yeah. So there we go. And then it goes on for a while. And then if this is true, if it's blank, then it will just keep repeating. If it's true, then it shoots. So there's a series of ranges here, which I did physical measurements to figure out, well, how far it can shoot at that degree, so that's how this whole system works. So that is basically my intro to program. If you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Hopefully this video wasn't too rough for you guys to follow, and yeah, so I'm trying out a new recording software on this video, so yeah, just let me know what you guys think, and if this helps, please like, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.